go see the doctor. When you're in your sickness, the people that you meet that help you manage your sickness or get out of your sickness, you know, or while you in your sickness, you know, treat it good, you know, try to do something positive. Um, it's not, you run into a lot of people, some people, you know, the majority of people is your sickness is, you know, it's going to be real bad. But those people that you meet that help you manage your sickness, those are the homies that like the ones you see like got businesses and they hoods, the ones that been straight, you know, uh, they always helping homies or whatever. Those homies ain't really around like that. You know, they dying off, we falling off. You know, it's just terrible. But I got a story about that. But welcome to the Dr. Crib Show. I'm your host, Dr. Crib, and this is real. You know, ain't no telling what we're going to be doing next year. I might be wearing a real doctor suit, you know, because this G-A-M-D is real. And you see it's real. Every day you look at this Internet and you see the shit that's going on with people. You seeing it right before your eyes, right before your face. G A M D. Gang gang addiction mental disorder affects everybody that's involved in a clique, crew, gangster, blood, cripping, whoever. Once you get addicted to that environment of what you see or what you think is it, what you think is cool and hood and all that, once that's set in, all it's going to do is morph into something that's dangerous that most people don't make it out of. A lot of people will make it, but most people won't, won't, won't make it out of. It's a very, very dangerous game. And you seeing it every day on this internet. You seeing it. The people that's telling you this and that. How what they doing and all that, how it's affecting, how it's affecting you. You know, surely but surely, people, you don't have no choice but to switch over to this side to say, man, listen, the agenda need to be really pushed hard to end gang violence. Like, no. Look that. Let's end. This shit is over with. And until that happen, it's people going to suffer. And it's going to happen right in front of your face. But like I said, you know, every now and then you run into those type of people that help you, you know, manage your sickness, that help you try to, you know, control your sickness, that try to, that's trying to take you to the next level in life so you can make the switch. You know, see, I didn't make the switch. That's why I got shot. I was supposed to be gone a long time ago because most people know to say, man, you seem too smart. Now, no, it's not ego. It's not none of that. Yeah, you was too wise. You was too smart to be over in that neighborhood for as long as you did. And that was your reward. So you see what happened when undying loyalty gets you if you a blood or a crypt. Look at my situation and others too. It's always others outside of me. And maybe they didn't do what I did, but listen, that's why they're not around no more. <laughs> and you can't replace those type of homies once they gone. You can't. Like I got the story about my homie Lotto from Menlo. No good. My boy, he shouldn't be dead today. He died trying to stop the gunfire. But because money and people in the streets who really in the streets, they don't need to talk to each other. The streets have to talk to the streets and money need to talk to money. 
But once it's like this, oh, money talking to the streets, the streets talk, it's a communication gap. And it's just a matter of time before it go bad. And in his situation, it went bad and it cost him his life. He in the middle of the street trying to stop the gunfire because he didn't want to come over there like that. But I, my story is about when he was helping me with my sickness because he was my friend. Whenever I do stuff on the street, I can cut, if he is on the street, he going <laughs> he going he going he going to come help me. He's a sponsor. I I'm, I can call him one of my sponsors. He is a true sponsor. But God called him home. Uh, but what we did one time was incredible. And it, you never know about how life is, how life goes. And the situations that you get put in. Okay. Okay. I have a friend that he happens to work then 20, I don't know, maybe this is 15, 20 years ago. I'm not sure. Uh, but it was at the Staples Center. So I, I assume whenever, I, how long the Staples Center been there? It's kind of like when the Staples Center first got there. Uh, but my boy worked there then. So my boy, he tells me, you know, what he does. He works on the floor. You know, he directs. He's a, He was a supervisor. You know, he deal with all the celebrities that come in there on the floor and all that. So this was during the time of uh, the, the Kobe Bryant situation when he had the thing in Denver. So if you don't know, Lotto kind of looks like Kobe a little bit. <laughs> If you turn to the side and we got, <laughs> you can see, <laughs> you can see Kobe, <laughs> you can see Kobe up in him. So uh, he always, we always joked about that. So uh, when the thing happened with Kobe, uh, he wanted to do, you know, some type of skits and all type of stuff. So we did some skits and all type of crazy stuff like that. But one of the most important things was is that Lotto was the type of person that when I when he asked me something, I give him the information, he's gonna try to go expedite that immediately. He like <laughs> I'm doing it right now. That's a good idea. So we were talking and I told him, I said, Man, look, I said, I got a boy that work at the um the, the Staples Center, I said, um, you know, because Lotto was in everything. He was pimping, he, you know, he had all kind of girls, everything. So I said, man, if we can get a girl to run out there on the court, you feel me? He could set it up to where, you know, we can get the girl just to run it. And they're not going to arrest her or tackle her or nothing. She's going to run out there in heels, you know, booty shorts. You know, half naked, fine. We just, she just got to be real fine and just interrupt the game on a, on a inbounds play, like, okay, and try to go hug Kobe or whatever. Like, Kobe run out there with a, you know, a number eight shirt, you know, uh, uh, a slingshot. Y'all call them wife. I don't know why they call them wife beaters. I ain't, I've never beat, I've never been, <laughs> I've never beat no female, but they, we call them slingshots. You know, cut with the number eight, Kobe, booty shorts, heels, real fly, run on the court, try to hug him. They're going to gaffle her, you know, slap on the wrist, whatever, you get released, you just get banned from the Staples Center. So we had a girl, super fine, thick, everything, Megan the Stallion thick. We ready to do it. Now, the hook was, I said, also, this is what this is what we're going to do. We're going to try to sell these T-shirts because I got these authentic T-shirts uh, of Kobe throwing up the F-U finger from the um, the sound check. You know, if people don't know, I helped when Kobe performed at the House of Blues 
in 2000, whatever that is, 2000, 2001, he performed live at the House of Blues. I helped put that show together with my partner, The Brain. We did that. People don't, un don't understand that, don't know that. I'm the first crip to work with Kobe Bryant. I keep trying to tell people that. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. But I said, we're going to sell this T-shirt. You know, uh, you uh, when we, uh, when, when the girl, she going to have that picture on the shirt, you know, so, you know, we're going to be standing outside and trying to sell the T-shirt. So that was the whole thing. Try to get her to run on the court, you feel me, and um, let, let her try to get Kobe, everybody see the shirt, Boom. And when you come out, we out there selling the shirts. So now my boy had told me, he said, listen, nut. he said, now when we put this thing together, when we put this thing together, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, be late, man. You got to be here because you're going to have to go. She got to go. When I say go, let her go. She going to have to go. I'm like, okay, for sure. We're going to be here. So everything is set up. But, you know, Lotto, he one of them type of persons that he tried to do too much at one time. So I, I told him, I said, Lotto, listen, man, we got this. But we didn't bought a gang of T-shirts and everything, you know. Um, well, Lotto did. He bought because he want to fund the whole everything. He like, no, we just going to, you know. I mean, you're going to get just a certain percentage for him. You know, I'm like, yeah, let, let's do it, man. Let's get this money. So we running late. You know, we stop on the, on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Um, and just chaos took place. You know, he got shit going on with his girls. He got <laughs> homies pulling up. He want to lock with this dude. Because <laughs> the – People don't understand Menlo's is out of control, all kind of money, and they just super out of control. Gang banging is just at an all time high over there. Uh, but everybody's in a sickness. You know, this is a real sick hood. We, every, we all over there. You know, I lived over there for 20 years, so I love them. Everybody, they love me. They know what the business is. Um, so he out here doing every. He got all kind of shit going on. So I'm like, Lotto. Man, we got to go. We got to <laughs> this guy is literally he waiting on us. He didn't told us how to come get in and everything. We know the the secret to get in. You know, he like go through here, boom, 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 boom. I'm have people there waiting for you. Boom, you gonna walk in through this way. We ain't gotta pay to get in. Boom, let her walk down. She gonna sit right here. I got a seat. She gonna sit in, and then when she sit in that seat. I'm going to have my people come over there and tell her when it's time, like, hey, you got to get up, like, boom. And when she get up, she going to just jolly on the court, you know? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a good plan. Yeah, all to sell the T-shirts. So, but you got to be here at that time. You can't be playing around. So, here I am on 64 from Vermont. <laughs> we dealing with <laughs> Lotto and his girls and gang banging, selling drugs. All kind of, he got everything going on. And I'm like, Lotto, man, we got to go, man. He like, okay. He like, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm like, no, you not. You just ask that nigga to get in. <laughs> Are you ready? You're not ready. Let's go. You know? He like, boom. We end up being an hour or something late. So when we finally get down there, um, we 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 park. You know, we get down there. So I'm like, Lotto, he, you know, I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm like, let me go see what's what's. Let's let me see what's going on. Let me let me see what can happen. So um, I tried to go in through the the little way he told me to go and. The guy who was supposed to be there, he ain't there. So I step outside. So I call him. I call my dude. I'm like, man, look, what's happening? He like, man, he like, nothing. What's happening? <laughs> he like, I told you to be there. <laughs> I said, I already know. 
I said, I already know, man. I said, man, I'm sorry, man. He like, man, you know, I can't, you know, everybody that was in position, we all, we was waiting. We had it set up. I was like, I know, I'm sorry. I said, but I'm here now. What can you do for me? He said, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I am don't know. Let, let's just see, you know, let me see what, let me see what it could do. I said, okay, well, I'm standing by the place. So he sent somebody over there, then boom, I'm inside the Staples Center. Cut through this place. Boom, I'm right in. So I walk, you know, you come up high on the, in the side, the, 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 the Staples Center, boom. So I walk down to the bottom. So when I walk down to the bottom, he down there, he like, man, that I, I ain't going to be able to do it. You know, I, I said, don't trip. I already know, man. We late. We supposed to be here. You know, he had all kind of shit going on. I said, but um, since I'm here, what can I, you know, I said, what I'm going to do is, uh, I said, I'm going to just walk up every single thing in the Staples Center, every single aisle. Just walk up and turn around and walk down. Can I do that without, you know, walk to the bottom? He like, yeah, go, I, I can make that happen. Ain't nobody. He said, you ain't going to be able to to um, walk, you know, through all the way down when you get to the bottom. He said, but ain't nobody going to say nothing to you. I'm going to tell him to do with that T-shirt on. He, That's my folks. Just let him do whatever he's going to do because he's just going to hang out down there at the bottom, turn around, and come back. Like, okay, for sure. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. So I started walking up the, 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 the flights, you know, each thing I walked up all like almost all of them all the way to the end of the game. Uh, and that, that particular game with the overtime and everything. And, um, uh, as I'm walking up, people are asking me, Hey man, where you get that t-shirt from? I'm like, in the front, outside, <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, like, man, because when you look at the shirt, it's a hard shirt, <laughs> you know, throwing up, but that's just a cool t-shirt hat, because you don't see Kobe like that all the time, so uh, I end up doing that, and then at the end of the game, when I came out, a uh, lot on them had sold all the t-shirts, <laughs> <laughs> they sold all the shirts. They said, man, people just was coming out like, man, where that shirt at? He was like, we were standing on the same side as the Staples Center, but they people came out and said, look, man, I can't stop you from selling. Uh, uh, you can't sell the T-shirts on this side of the Staples Center. He said, but I can't say nothing to you if you cross the street and stand on that side. I can't say nothing to you. He was like, oh, okay, for sure. So they just stood on that side of the of the, of the street right in front of the stable center where people come out, and boom. He said, we was out there holding the T-shirts, and people was pulling over everything. So when I came out, he gave me like about 1500 or 2000 or something. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because he had a – we bought boxes of shirts. He bought boxes because he had a plug. So he went to his boy printed up Buku shirts, you know, triple A. So we had, man, we had a lot of shirts. I, I, I'm i almost guaranteed that we had at least three to 500, something like that, man. Shirts, all different sizes, different colors. Said people was buying all of them. So those shirts are out there floating around right now. I can't believe it. Something that I was a part of with that. <laughs> it's out there floating around. Some people walk, got them shirts on right now, probably with Kobe doing like this. That is crazy. But my boy Lotto from Menlo, I miss him dearly, man. He should not be dead. And, you know, he was a hustler. He was, you know what he used to do? People don't know. He went, he went to jail for about, I, I, I want to say he went to jail about, this is right before he died. This, all this stuff happened right before he died. Um, he was the, he was, a uh, when he got out of jail, I think he had did about three or four years in jail or something like that. But when he got out, he came up to the park 
So he's been out maybe a couple of weeks, and Lotto always on his feet fast. And one of the things about Lotto, he don't be doing crime. He don't be serving. He be doing what you, you know, <laughs> all kind of outrageous stuff. Right? So this was his thing when he got out this time. He pulled up in the park. Boom, and some of my little homies came. And they was like, hey, now this is a, it's a dude from Menlo looking for you. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, he in the, he in the silver bins over there. So, boom, I went on. I'm like, damn, Lotto, you only been out two weeks, man. It ain't your office, the parole officer going to say you living above your means. You can't be. <laughs> he was like, no. He's like, no, I'm not. My PO know what I do. And they, she love it. You know, she love it. I was like, what is it that you do? He said, I'm the Hulk on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> I said, what? He said, man, I'm the Hulk on Hollywood Boulevard. He said, I got the whole outfit, everything. Boom. I got the mask. I got the hands. I got the arms. I got the whole nine. So he already kind of short like Tyson, stocky. <laughs> so I was like, he said, I got the feet. He said, I got everything. He said, man, I paid about $1,500 for the, for the Hulk outfit or something. I was like, what? He was like, yeah. He said, I'm really the Hulk out there. He like, hey, and they be hating because everybody be wanting to take pictures with me. He was like, I had to dust off Spider-Man. I was like, so when I be seeing the the people, the characters on Hollywood, you know, sometimes they get into it for them tips. I always think about Lotto. He was like, man, I beat the shit out of Spider-Man on on the side, somewhere in the cut. I was like, for real? Like, yeah, because he was hating on me, you know? I was like, you are out of control. Fresh out. It's always a it's always a way to make some money in if you have the ability, your mind, your sickness. You know, if you're in your sickness, that's something that manager, because God sent him, him, him uh, my way in the last his last in his last time on earth so it was about approximately about within the 30 days of his death he came to the park again and he was like nah y'all got a young homie named wooty woo he was like man i what what i gotta do to, i said that that dude ain't supposed to gang bang his mama you know he come from good stock he ain't no gang member i don't know why he um, want to do this? That boy that ain't he ain't ready for this and that. You know he he was a good kid. All this and that. And I'm like man. It turned out he's trying to be a knucklehead over here. I was like man, you talking about touch? I'm like man, that dude. He, he like no, nah, he ain't like that. He like who I got to squabble to get him back? Man, I squabble any one of your homies. Man, let him go. I was like Lotto, come on man, you can't. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't put me in that position like that. He like man, I'm serious man. That dude do not need to gang bang. He is not ready for this. He over, he over, he over thinking and living his, he think that he need to do this to impress somebody. And he's not, he, you know, his mom makes a lot of money and she love him to death. I'm like, man, I've seen his mama come up here before, you know, chasing him. Him and his, I think he got an auntie too. He's like, yeah, like man, giving back, man. I said, man, I, you know, I don't control that lotto, but that's look how serious he was for this dude that wasn't even his child, but he was in, you know, he had a connection with the mother, you know, so, and he, you know, he trying to, you know, save the young homie, which is already, he already turned up. You know, so and the homie went to jail a little bit after that. That young homie went to jail and he said he called he, he called and I talked to him one day. He said, hey, what's up, big homie? Well, I'm like, he because he turned 18. Now you got to go to the county. He, like, What's up, big homie? Like, man, what's up, man? How you handling in there, man? You good? He said, man, I, I didn't have about 30 fights. I ain't won none of them, but I ain't turning nothing down. <laughs> I said, because yeah. you, you, I was like, man, just do your thing, homie. Just turn, just, just don't, you know. Now I, I hear from 
look, he this dude, he like, man, I didn't have about 30 fights, homie. And I don't think I won none of them. But every time they call my name or whatever, homie, I ain't turning nothing down. Woo, doo, doo, woo. I'm like, yeah. And when you hear from the enemies too, cause you don't know, like, that you got a young homie here and ain't woo woo. Like this dude is tripping. <laughs> like he be getting his ass kicked, but homie crazy. The dude that shot me ain't heard nothing like that when he was in the county. Nothing. But then you get out and you this hardcore dude. That's just the times we living with. I'm speaking on your business, but I know you was in the county for like a year or so. I ain't heard nothing about you. Don't lie. We wasn't hearing your name ringing like that. You wasn't, Your name wasn't ringing like that in there. You was with the homie, son. His name was ringing. Didn't hear nothing about your name. Heard something about the other homies in there. Can name them all. Never heard nothing about you, though. Not saying that you was getting whooped on nothing either. But did one hearing about you in there, you vicious and all that. Because you ain't built like that. But when you get out, I guess people have different agendas. That's why this is, you know, it's young versus old right now. If it ain't happened to your hood, it's coming real soon. That's why you need to end the sickness. You need to manage your sickness to where you can get up out of there and do something different. Because if your hood right now don't got the three things, education, business, you know, uh, gentleman's quarter, whatever it is, if you don't have business in your hood, your, your hood not functioning, Barbershop, weed shop, and a business. If you don't have those three basic things in your hood, you don't control that. You had it for doom. And if you got that, then you need to be trying to get a hospital, a bank, and an education center. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, this Dr. Crip, man, it's real out here. We need to end this sickness, man. That's what we need to do. We need to end this sickness. This Dr. Crip. <laughs>